we're just coming out of winter, but well, this morning you wouldn't have thought so. We literally couldn't see around in front of your face. Thick white fog, really old frost last night. And I didn't get down here till probably about half past 11. But yeah, you can tell it was going to be a cold one. But typical spring, you know, sunny days, cold nights, temperatures getting up to about 10 degrees. I mean, you can see from around us now, we've had a lot of rain this winter. The water's well up. A lot of cold water as well. But there has been a couple getting caught. We've got three days. We're in the Cotswolds, down at the lodge. Plan is today, keep your eyes peeled, really. Like I say, it was a white out, you couldn't see anything until probably getting on for about half past nine until the sun's sort of burning it off. But I've, I've been coming down quite a bit over the winter. I say quite a bit, sort of three trips. And uh, just sort of through this middle section of the lake, coming into that evening time, you know, get away with a bit of leading around. They seem to push right out to the shallows in the day, especially with the sun out. So plan is, bit of a lead around, could fish till 10 o'clock tonight. You know, we've got a lot of hours of darkness, that seven, eight, nine o'clock is sort of hot times. So yeah, lead around, find a, a nice sort of area, get a bit of bait out there. Like I said, they do, they love the grub in here. I mean, although the water temperature is still sort of cold, you know, catching them over like little, well, sort of three or four kilo buckets of crumb all the way through. Uh, so yeah, give a bit of bait out there and keep your eyes peeled. You know, we've got that as sort of a fall back on into the evenings with uh, a possible, you know, if we can sort of find a few up in the shallows, chods, zigs, you know, sort of hinges, whatever it be, see if we can nick a bite up there. And as that sort of sun drops and they push down into this deeper water, you know, we've got that sort of baited area to sort of keep an eye on. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed over the next couple of days. Plenty of nice ones in here, so you never know. Hopefully get one. more like it there, buddy. Like I said, they've had a lot of bait, a lot of bits in that area. We're catching the odd tench as well. So like I said, I know it's a good area in the middle of the lake. I'd rather find something that's firm, glassy, it's almost got like a little layer of silt on it. Imagine when they start feeding, although more than likely expecting a, a bite in the hour of darkness. Everything's just sort of clouding up in it in front of the faces as they're sort of digging around, you know, much more likely than making a mistake. But yeah, firm, firm glassy areas definitely seem to be the one. I've had most of my bites from them on here. Like I say, a lot of it, so you present a bait anywhere out there now, but obviously they will be digging around with stuff and it's more them sort of natural areas that they'll be visiting. A lot of them very small though, literally, you, whoa, I've done it quite a few times on here. I've been fishing elsewhere, got the mono on the spools, do all the lead work with the braid. You know, you're putting your rods out, you, you, you're talking like an 18 inch, two foot pull, a really nice glassy sort of silt. Might be just behind a, a gravelly areas or weed, but you know, like you're putting the mono on, even 15 pound mono with like eight wraps. You're just not getting that drop, so, you know, having to put the braid back on, fishing the spots and obviously the strips of silt that they're feeding on are quite small. Not to say you won't get a bite off the big gravel area like, but it's just a, a personal preference. I think taking the time and finding them smaller areas, presenting baits on them, you know, it's more of a natural, a natural area, I suppose, a, a big old gravel area next to it. The lake we're fishing at the minute, although only a small lake, four, four and a half, five acres at most, an incredible stock of carp. There's got to be over 120 fish in here. And there's got to be 35 fish now that are over 30 pound. Five of which over 40 pound with the big one. You know, 54, 10 we managed to catch them in November. Monster. I mean, the water clarity, you know, it's gin clear, gravel pit, but full of natural food. Not only the anglers' baits, you know, that they're getting big on. And the weight gains prove it. A lot of them, three, four, some even five pound a year that they're putting on. You can imagine it gets quite busy in the summer, holiday makers, people walking around. But in the winter, the park itself, complete flip side to the summer. You know, there's no one here. It's not a day ticket fishing unless you're staying on the park or you own a lodge. It's the only way you can fish the lake. Obviously with the quiet banks and so many big fish, you know, there's always that chance of catching one. They love the bait in here, especially the boilies. A lot of tench as well, so sort of halving the 20 millers, keeping the 16 sort of whole. I say we're only just into March. And it's been cold, but you know, not wanting to put loads of bits out there. But yeah, I'm sure uh, I'm sure that lot won't last long out there.
say, I know they do like this central area, sort of, is it getting into darkness? So, uh, yeah, we're putting that bit of bait out there. Get a couple of rigs tied up, not too far from the norm, really. Just sort of claw styles, but rather than fishing on claws, I've got a feeling them tents are going to be a lot more active. All winter, little 12 millies fishing over crumb. I say I've left a lot of 16s in there, half the 20s, so 60 mil tough one, sort of topped off with a 40 mil yellow mold there. Just to balance them out, just a little bit bigger up baits just to try and avoid them tents really. Bit of a pain in the arse, obviously recasting in the dark. Using quite big, well, some sort of six ounce flat pairs as well. Searching out them real, sort of firm, clean spots. Big leads, braid, tight clutches. Definitely seems to be the way, you know, they ain't getting away with that. long got the rods out there gone for a couple of big snowman well say big snowmans 16 miller with a 14 on top it's a bit bigger than what i had been using the little 12 millies but yeah the weather's ain't looking the great but as it's sort of getting more and more there's a lot more cloud cover building now certainly a lot warmer than it was this morning like i said before real thick fog high pressure quite an hard ground frost as well uh, so yeah we've seen that one off to the left sort of winds pump well, i say pumping you know it's again it's picked up as we're getting on into the evening sort of pushing down towards the shallower end. So, middle for diddle if you like, you know, there's always fish sort of passing to and from. So yeah, stick to the guns. Like I say, they know they like a bit of grub in here. Probably put all in all, two, two and a half kilo, sort of chop 20s, whole 16s, a couple of snowmans over the top. I think going into darkness, there's definitely got to be a chance. No joy last night, well I say no joy, three tents she ended up with, and one of them as well took the other rod out. That wind picked up, pissing down with rain, until about, well, it was about one o'clock in the morning and it stopped. But yeah, while sort of fiddling around with one of them tents, did hear one sort of slosh out, sort of sounded well to the left in this corner. Sounded a good fish as well, you know, typical this time of year, you can hear one, there's generally a few in the area, so. Been watching hard this morning, no signs yet, but I think it's going to flick a couple of zigs out perhaps in this area for a few hours. Keep my eyes peeled to see what happens. There's always that area we fished last night to sort of put a bit of bait on, fall back onto in the evening. So, yeah, grab this brew and then uh, maybe flick some rods out in this area. So sat here watching then, a little puff of fizz come up. Then one at the back of it, one at the side of it. You know, there's definitely a few out there. At first of all, I thought it could have been tench. But, nah, I'm pretty sure there's a, a little pod of carp out there, I'm sure of it. And by the look of it, having a little dig around as well. A few, but we could tell sort of like moving bubbles, you know, bop, 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 bop. you see them sort of in a line as sort of like the fish are moving off, obviously pushing through the gills, but that sort of like, you know, it sort of turned into a bit of a foamy fizz. I'm sure there's a couple there having a feed, or at least having a dig about on summer. But yeah, I'm pretty convinced there's a group of carps that, it would have been in that area, would have heard that one last night, I'm sure. That sounded quite far down to my left. And from knowing the pit, I'd say it's quite flooded at the minute. Last time, it was November though, but you know, cold. Same sort of water level, and the, yeah, a lot of fish did get in this corner. Caught a few out of here as well, a few nice ones. I mean, I know the ground have been a little bit too mine, so we go on that other bank, sort of flick them out to spots I know. I can imagine the weed being quite low at the minute, or I don't know, I'm sort of half thinking a zig off to the side, maybe like a long hinge, quite a long boom on it little lead and just sort of flick one out for a few hours. There's obviously a couple there. See if we can't nick a bite.
just having a little mooch down there then, just in the chest waders. Uh, just sort of having a little nosy around over the edges. See, well, it's, well, it's quite a big gravel spot. It must be in sort of five, six foot of water. Yeah, sort of come back, handful of chops on it, handful of 15s. I sort of stood there because, well, a couple of my lords straight away took an interest to so sort of stand there, trying to scare them off. Yeah, 10 minutes or so. See an half decent sized mirror sort of drop down, straight away he started feeding. So yeah, sort of like legged it back, I wind these in and uh, yeah, see if we can't catch him. So the sun's still sort of creeping around, it's perfect for this bit of water here. But, uh, yeah, I need to get some rods sorted before it goes dark anyway, but seeing the response, they were clearly up for a bit of bait, so I know a spot just to the right of this. I said we've seen a couple in this area now, so rather than sort of bombarding these, I think just on the outskirts of them, a couple of rods on a spot, give them a bit of bait, and then this little spot here where we see them, I know another little spot as well down the edge, I think, put a bit of bait on them when it's dark. Quite a few mallards and swans around, so Stick it in there when it's dark and uh, an option to look at tomorrow. Try and nick a quick bite before we go home. So we've having a look on there, obviously seen them couple of fish in that corner. It's like a big stump as well, like a big old tree stump that's come down. Sort of get on top of it obviously gives you a bit of a viewing point. Did see two as well, sort of just off the margin of your shelf, so you imagine there's quite a few in this area. Obviously it's getting a lot of sun all day as well. So yeah, just not wanting to bombard it right on top of them, just having to let around sort of on the corner of the lake, I suppose it's not a bay. Just on the outskirts of it, just trying to get something I can present a couple of rigs over, get a bit of bait out there and fingers crossed a few push out in the evening, or sort of on dark, and then like I said we've got till 10 o'clock. Uh, yeah, fingers crossed we can get a bite. A lot of the time in my fishing, I'm searching for a, them smaller, natural sort of zones. You, know, you quite often find them within a few rod lengths of main spots, if you like. Bit of lead work around them, you know, you can find them sort of natural zones that they fed off at the side of the spots. Without the braid, you know, you're never going to locate them. A lot of the time you do it with a lead rod. With that braid, you know, you are to the inch. Searching out them smaller spots, you've got to be. Without foaming it up too much, I managed to find a nice spot out there. Certainly get two rods on it. Yeah, without spawning. I'd say there's definitely been a few around in the area. Just gonna put a kilo or so just around the float. And then yeah, get two snowmans out there and hopefully into darkness. We ain't scared them away and get a chance. Well, I do get through a fair bit of bait, but I put use more in the winter than the spring as that as it sounds. They're up and about. Although I do use bait, a few hundred baits a kilo in an area, you know, it's plenty, I ain't going mad. But certainly having it with me, again, it's a lot of boily fishing. Easy to apply with a catty of the stick, minimal disturbance. I use it, but I certainly don't go mad with bait in the spring. Right, oh, it's been a mega day today. First day, it's actually properly felt like spring. Had a bit of warmth in that sun. See it now just dropping over the trees. But yeah, we've not long two snowmans back out there, spread a bit of bully, you know, rather than the spawning. There's definitely been a few about. Even now there, just seeing sort of like the water rock, a bit of a line of bubbles. You know, they've definitely been enjoying that spring sun today. So fingers crossed, they're up for a bit of a munch this evening.
sorted out now. I mean, it's like just gone eight o'clock. You can't get them out till eight o'clock this morning, but we've been up since about half past six, sort of watching. As you can see, it's a complete whiteout again. And cold, cold nights, sort of warmer days. Hoping that they turn back up again. Like I said, we've not seen anything yet. You, know, you can't see Andy in front of your face sort of job, you know. But yeah, a couple of rods out there, and uh, hopefully when this burns off again, we get a chance. We've seen them couple down that margin. I think see the morning out here, and as soon as that sun sort of creeps round and hits that margin more, we're going to move around there, get one sat on that little spot where we see him come in yesterday. Rigging first, then a bit of bait, sit back. And uh, yeah, see a few as well, sort of deeper down, sort of further to the left down the margin. So I think the plan is split the rods up, single stick on there, single stick just the other side of the bush, and get a little zig. Uh, sort of just two, three rod lengths out, that's all. But like I said, when you get up on top of that uh, sort of old stump, you can see them. Not loads, but like the odd one coming through. So yeah, I think try and get a zig in front of their face and uh, a rod on that little margin spot. And fingers crossed, we're just praying on that sun today, really. But yeah, I reckon there could be half a chance if they turn back up. Colours on him. Oh yeah, mega buzzing with that. Just flipped. Well, one first cast. Obviously using the big old sixes as well. Overgunned it. Obviously better than hitting it short. But yeah, it's hit the clip a little bit short. Bounced back. Luckily second cast. Lovely. Yeah, all quiet. But like I said I did spread about two kilo of over that float yesterday. They obviously got on it last night and still a bit left there this morning. Rod's just whacked off there. Lovely common. Real nice colours on him. Definitely. Oh, yeah. 21, 22 pound by the look of him. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to get this rig sorted and uh, get that rod back out there quick as possible. There's definitely bits of fizzing yesterday morning, so could be a chance of another one yet. Dropped down real cold last night, around minus two, thick fog again. But yeah, you can fish from eight o'clock, so we were up, up for about half past six, brew, everything on the barrow, round to the swim for about seven o'clock. Got some fresh baits tied on. Although it did take two casts with them big leads. Got him bang on the spot, nice drop. And uh, yeah, the rod's only out 20 minutes, half an hour. I whacked off for this one. Imagine just over 20 pound. Mega. Definitely think there's time for another chance yet as well. So wait for that sun to pop up. If they're getting that margin again, hopefully get another one. Yeah, we'll get him back and get the kettle on. I'm freezing. with him.
dumpy mirror. I'll do. Literally just put that other one back, flip the kettle on, make a tea and have a warm up. It not long boiled. And the uh, yeah, the left hand are whacked off. Just a hinge where I see a little bit of fizzing and activity yesterday. Long link on it hinge, flicked it out there. Not really clean, but a bit of a muffled drop on it. Pouch will bait over the top. And yeah, this little dumpy one. But an hour later, yeah, definitely looks good for a, another chance yet still. But yeah, mega. I'll get him back, get some rigs tied in case we move on to that bottom bank yet yeah, when that sun pops out. But yeah, wicked one. Best hit in the spring. You may be faced with a lot more sort of opportunist sort of style fishing. You know, in the summer and after spawning, it's more spots, setting things up and stuff. In the spring, you know, it's, like I say, it's a lot of opportunities. You're going off what you're seeing. So you may be faced with many different sort of scenarios. It may be chods, zigs, you know, in the edge, wrap bags. It's having everything to suit every situation, but sort of cut down and minimalise. So you're not lugging loads of kit around with you. You know, in the spring, like I say, it's everything in a little bag, on the barra. Fish has moved, you know, you're getting on there with them being very there all around the pit and finding where's most comfortable for them so you know being able to react quick and some pits are quite busy you know beat the next man and getting sort of in front of the fish if you like so yeah everything in the little rucksack you know tiny little rucksack everything I'd, any situation i can come across i've got everything in there that will sort of sit it everything for rigs chods hinges anything that you know claws anything that's sort of rig construction wise fits in there little bag same with the zigs, everything's in there, hook links, the 11 and the 13 pound, loads of different sort of kickers and colour foams and different sort of size hooks, you know, might be fishing where it's weedy, I've got some size 8s and 6s, again, right down to sort of size 12s and 10s in there, so again, every situation sort of a tiny little bag. It's actually a zig box, but it's sort of used more for a couple of chods up there, ready tied up hinge sections ready you know it's like it's a lot of that sort of chods hinges zigs quick almost bite fishing reactive fishing so yeah been ready a few in there and then it's spare spools We've got some mono spools in there something that's 20 pound mono in there again if we're fishing the zigs i'd much rather the mono on there to be honest so some mono spools set of binoculars spare spool of mono and then it's just Random tubs of pop-ups in the bottom. Yeah, spare, spare sort of 13 pound up link. Might be a couple of bubble floats in here. A little surface opportunity comes up. But yeah, everything that I could need or adapt to. You know, I won't go all the way through it and bore you with it, but you know, carp care kits, marker floats, tapered leaders. There's a load of solid bags in there in case we ever need to sort of you know, that sort of situation arises. That one's just sort of full of updates, scales in the front, loads of spare rooks. That's one thing I carry is a lot of spare rooks. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. A load of crap in the top of there, red torches, receiver. But you know, a couple of bank sticks in the front of it. Everything that you could need for any situation in the bag, on the barra, and away you can go. See now that fog mist pretty much burnt off by now that sun, you know, it's got a bit of heat in it again. Sort of going off yesterday and having a wander around there, put a bit of bait on that spot, you know, stood in the bushes to keep the birds off. Only 10 minutes or so, one's come in, got a rod sorted, gone around there, there's three of them there. So I think, you know, rather than make the mistake of attract any birds or risk, I'm trying to get a rig amongst them. I'm gonna wind these in now, go around there, get one load on that spot, handful of bait, and then just flick a hinge just just off the shelf, I'd say from getting up on that stump over there, you can see a few sort of moving through deep down. Same sort of conditions, you know, it's, it's cleared right up now. So I think, yeah, get these wound in, go around there and just see if we can't nick one before we head home. Got 
around here now. One rod there, big six ounce, which just waded out. So the sun was beating here, you can feel the difference. Okay. Off the back of the wind, real, like I say, there's a bit of warmth in it now. But yeah, one dropped on that spot there, handful of chops. And that sort of route they were coming on the other day where I seen them. Just flicked a hinge out there, yellow one, and he stands out like a sore thumb, but handful of chops around him. And yeah, hopefully one will drop and pick. Well, I'm really confident with a bite, to be honest. As I was up there, just flicking that rod out, you see one sort of drifting in. Good and definite 35 plus. A lot of white mucus on his back, that real crusty one. But yeah, he looked like he was coming right in, sort of, to near this spot here. But yeah, it was about this time, like I say, it's worked to know they were that close in, the edge sort of come on, put a bit of bait in, and then the. It's always tricky trying to get a rig on a spot when they're already there feeding, you know? So, sort of trap set. If they come in, you know, I'm sure we can tag one. A little one, but it's a nice one. What I say, a little one, it's definitely a 20. We made that little move around the corner worthwhile, plot one on that little spot where we've seen them the other day. And yeah, it would have been in about an hour, I suppose. Got up the log there, seen a couple sort of drifting right into the margin. Yeah, the way this one put up for himself, you know, right scrapper. But yeah, more than made up with him. We get him back, quick bite to eat, and then uh, yeah, wrap it up and hit the road. <laughs> 